Thank you for staying with us. It's time now to take a look at stories making headlines on the front page of Nigerian newspapers. And I begin with the Daily Trust. The major story here, Chief of Army Staff to Plateau Governor, bring all on board to end killings. It says Dialogue Vital Solution forecloses amnesty for bandits. Troops kill three gunmen in Mangu. Uh, we are at a challenging junction. Mof Twang speaking, that's the governor of Plateau State, reacting to uh, the conversation he had with the chief of army staff. Now to the front page of this Nigerian newspaper. No amnesty for bandits, says chief of army staff Lagbaja, requests free hand to eliminate terrorists. Come to our aid, Zamfara Plateau governors beg military. You find all the details on the front page of uh, this Nigeria newspaper. To the Daily Times, how kidnappers in the federal capital territory steal babies, put them in big sacks for sale, NSCDC uh, reacting there to developments coming out of uh, the federal capital territory with the regards to babies being stolen. And to the Nation newspaper, Tinubu remedy for subsidy withdrawal hardship soon. Uh, President asks lawmakers to approve 500 billion naira palliatives cash. And on the front page of the blueprint, fuel subsidy removal. Tinubu hints on cash transfer approach for 500 billion naira palliatives. I understand Nigerians are suffering, but no child births without pain. Uh, Breton Woods, foreigners won't solve our problems for us. Uh, you find all of the details of that story on the front page of the Blueprint newspaper. Mike. All right, I have the leadership newspaper here and um, is, is on subsidy removal. And he says, be patient, palliatives will come. Tinubu tells Nigerians, be patient, palliatives will come. Tinubu tells Nigerians, as some fuel subsidy there on the front page of the leadership newspaper. First news is next, is still on subsidy removal. And it says, Tinubu writes reps, requests 500 billion naira palliatives. Wright says, I'm aware Nigerians are suffering, but relief is on the way. That's what uh, First News has. Voice of Liberty. Feel subsidy removal. President Tinubu writes National Assembly, seeks uh, 500 billion naira for palliatives. All right, that's what the, Liber the Voice of Liberty has in there. The Punch newspaper is next. NLC protests Tinubu's 500 billion naira subsidy palliative, demands 300% pay rise. All right, reps sit on 500 billion naira subsidy relief request today, and federal government uh, labor uh, for fresh negotiations. And the 500 billion naira not enough for 125 million. Uh, poor Nigerians affected by deregulation. NLC, TUC uh, are saying this. Okay, you see all this on the front page of the Punch newspaper. The, the Guardian is next. Inflation and higher, edu higher education. That's the focus here. Tough times for students, parents, as school hikes fees by 200%. Tough times for students, parents, as schools hike fees by 200%. That's what the Guardian newspaper has. And the business day is next. Airlines funds face no delay on forex reforms. All right, that's what business day has. Airlines funds face no delays on forex reforms. Okay, that's what business day has. And from there, let's move to Nigerian News Direct. And it's focusing on gas supply. IOC's call for federal government's intervention in payment of $1 billion debt, all right? International oil companies call for federal government's intervention in payment of $1 billion debt, okay? That's what uh, Nigeria News Direct has. And that's the last one we're looking at now, Veronica. All right, let's look at uh, uh, the story that is on some of the f uh, pages of the papers this morning. If you look at... Uh, this Nigerian newspaper, as well as uh, the Daily Trust, where the chief of army staff, uh, Tarid Lagbaja, you know, he hosted um, the governors of uh, Zamfara State, as well as Plateau State yesterday at uh, the army headquarters in Abuja. Uh, they had come talking about the governors to seek 
uh, some form of support from uh, the military. And uh, the chief of army staff went to ahead to say that uh, there was not going to be any form of amnesty for bandits because there has been calls from a former governor of Zamfara State that uh, the president should speak, you know, have a conversation with these bandits and, and see that there can be some level of amnesty like what was done by the late president Yaradua in Niger Delta. But now the army has come out to say there's nothing like that and that uh, governors should give them, talking about the army now, free hand to do their jobs, come after these persons who are bandits terrorizing uh, some parts or the parts of the country. Uh, and Nigerians have begun to react to, you know, this statement. So what does it mean by giving us a free hand? What does it mean by giving us a freedom, bottom line, to addressing uh, these issues? Uh, once they get the directive from the president, the answer is to just go in and, you know, do the needful. But why do they need this free hand from governors? Yeah, there, there are. it's quite important to uh, explain some of these issues. Mm. As much as everything wasn't uh, made um, clear by the, by the chief of army staff. But the point there is, we we from reports you know that have been coming from the states, we know that state governments at their levels have been doing different things to see how they can um, come up with uh, you know try to stem the tide of insecurity within their states, mm. and a lot of it goes into the issue of negotiation. Mm. A lot of it goes into the issue of uh, uh, different kind, using, you know... Carrot and stick approach. Yeah, carrot and stick approach. But the point there is they've, they've used traditional rulers sometimes to speak to people, you know, at the grassroots. No. They've used um, vigilante organizations to try to, you know... So all of these, you know, these are not conventional uh, wow. uh, ways as far as the military is concerned. When the military is given the order to wipe out a certain, like the, 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 the president gave them a margin order, take care of issues in Benue and Plateau mm. and, and so on. <laughs> so if vigilante group or the use of uh, uh, traditional rulers to speak to grassroots people or a way of negotiating, those are not conventional ways the military operates. Yeah. So when the military is about to move into a certain area. We've seen in the past where governors will say, well, there is an ongoing negotiation that is, that is uh, we are about to get results from this and results from that. So can you stall a little bit so that we can go through? Recall the days of um, Islamic cleric uh, when he was negotiating, you know, seeing uh, 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 members of the bandits yeah. and also meeting government on the other hand, you know, trying to ensure that there's an understanding between both sides so that uh, uh, insecurity can, can reduce. Well, has that worked perfectly? Now, that's, the, that's what now, I'm waiting for. Yeah, that, that may not have worked out because, in fact, recall that uh, governor, former Governor Rufai of uh, Kaduna State at one point talked about the issue of uh, negotiation. It didn't work. It broke down. Go former Governor of uh, Katsina State, Amindu Belo Masari, also walked around this issue of uh, negotiation. It didn't work. It, it didn't work out. Go former governor of uh, Zamfara State, the same thing. So it goes and comes like that, but all of these haven't worked. So, but the point there is, it, the, when they also see that the military that has the, you know, constitutional mandate to protect the country, somehow we've also heard when the military has been overwhelmed, where... They, they can't be everywhere at the same time, and then some kidnappings take place, and then some uh, 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 attacks also take place, and so on. Of course, we've seen the reduction in the bombings and so on that used to be uh, more than uh, five or six years ago. But the issue there is state governments do different things to try to see how they can restore normalcy within their domains. And sometimes it can run contrary to the orders that the military is given. So that is why it became necessary for the military and the state governors to work together mm. as a way of trying to ensure that this time around, let our strategy and your strategy be in sync mm -hmm. so that we can wipe out all of these people that are terrorizing uh, your domain. Absolutely. So that's why it became necessary for the military uh, to state that clearly. In this as, manner. In, in, this, in this way. So, but the governors that he was speaking to, they understand the language. That language. That speaking. Absolutely. But Nigerians want to also understand the language. Uh, yes, of we course. We are all in, in this uh, situation yes. as we speak. But then we have to leave the conversation. The leaders can yeah. understand on their behalf. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> all right. We'll leave this conversation here now.